Based on the current situation, video chat systems are becoming more and more popular. There are a lot of different solutions on the market. Some of them are free to use, some of them need a paid subscription plan. Some of them are encrypted and guarantee a certain level of data privacy, some others don't have that. I would like to show you how to set up your self-hosted video chat server with the open source software Jitsi. There are a lot of tutorials online and everything seems to be super easy. I would like to focus on a few more topics so we end up with a usable production ready system that you can deploy for one of your customers for example. Since Jitsi is under active development and some of the settings may change, please keep in mind that I recorded this video in April 2020 and even though I try to keep it as general as possible some details might have changed depending on when you are watching this. First off, you need to set up a dedicated or virtual server that hosts the Jitsi video chat software. There are many providers and I will not go into the details of setting this up. Make sure to set up a domain name that points to the server. I also do not want to reiterate what the Jitsi quick install guide already tells you. Have a look at this at the jitsi.org website. When it comes to setting up the firewall, the Jitsi Quick Start Guide only states which ports you need to open but does not exactly tell you how to do this. I'm using UFW, the uncomplicated firewall for this, so let's have a look at the details. You install the Debian package UFW and issue the following commands to set up the firewall rules. This opens the SSH port and HTTPS and HTTP ports. Furthermore, it will open port 10,000 UDP, not TCP, for Jitsi. In some older tutorials, you will see that the whole range range from port 10,000 to 20,000 was opened, which is not necessary anymore. At the end of the installation process, you will get a hint to install a Let's Encrypt TLS certificate using a shell script. It also states that you should rerun the script to renew the certificate, but this is generally a bad idea, and you should automate this process, of course. Simply create a file in etc cron daily named certboard and add the following content to it. Save the file and close it and make it executable. If you are using Nginx, which is the default dependency on Debian right now, you need to tell the web server that it should reload its configuration when a new certificate is deployed. Add a file reload nginx in the directory etc let's encrypt renew hooks deploy with the following content and again make the file executable. Placing the script in the deploy hook makes sure that it only runs after a successful renewal. By default, the Nginx configuration and the Jitsi virtual host configuration get a B score when you test your Jitsi domain with ssllabs.com. Let's improve this with a few simple steps. First off, set server tokens to off in the Nginx conf to hide the exact version number of the web server. Then run the following OpenSSL command to generate custom parameters for the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. Finally, add or change the following settings both in the Nginx conf and your specific virtual host file under sites available in etc Nginx. Depending on where you generated the dhparams pem file, please make sure to move it to etc Nginx. The following steps are completely optional and you do not have to do this. You can clear the default homepage of Nginx, you can disable web robots to crawl the Jitsi website, and depending on what you are trying to achieve with regard to data privacy, you might want to disable the logging of the Nginx web server altogether. The default Jitsi website already looks pretty neat, but you can easily customize the look of it. If you are hosting such a website in Germany, for example, you definitely want to include links to the imprint and to a page with that data privacy information. You can change the logo, you can at least change the link to your website in the interface config JavaScript file, and you can insert your own description and headline in the corresponding language file like main-de.json for the German translation, for example. If you are required to link to certain information by law, you should change the footer and include those links there. If you want to monitor your Jitsi instance, you can have a look at the log files gcofo.log and jvblog in varlog Jitsi, but unfortunately it's not that easy to get a hold of the number of active meeting rooms or the number of participants in those rooms. The Jitsi video bridge comes with a REST API that has endpoints for common stats and the conference rooms. You can activate the web service by editing the etc Jitsi video bridge config file. Once you've done that, you should run 
service GC Video Bridge 2 restart and after that you can access the stats and contract details via the REST API. If you SSH into your server you can forward the port 8080 to your local machine so you can easily access the web service with your local browser. By now you have a Jitsi installation that allows everybody to start a new conference. If you are seeing a lot of abuse on your server or want to restrict this to users with a username and password right away, you can configure something called a secure domain in Gcofo. I will not go into the details of setting this up because there are other possibilities for you and it depends on what you are trying to achieve. For example, you could simply use HTTP authentication to protect your whole Jitsi website as well. Thank you for watching this video. In case you liked it, give it a thumbs up and if you did not like it, a thumbs down. Either way, please let me know in the comments what you think. If you do not want to miss any future videos, simply subscribe to the channel and activate the bell to get notifications when a new video is published.